What's up, everybody? This is Post Production Pie with SRLounge.com. Now, welcome to this week's weekly edit. This week, we're going to be working inside of the Lightroom 5 beta, and we're working on this current image that you see here. This was shot just this past week, and we actually shot this image using the Lowell GL1, which we are or have already done a review of. I'm not sure when it's going up, but uh, we're using the Lowell GL1 as a backlight for this image, uh, and it was shot on a 5D Mark III. It was shot at 1 200th of a second at f2 iso 400 you can see that this is actually a very bright setup uh we have these window lights coming in right from the left side the lowell is far far away and we're still getting a really nice bright light as this little soft hair light glow if i had anything i'd do differently i might have added a second low light uh, or a second kind of light on the hair uh, i didn't have a second assistant so that would have been a little bit tough but uh placing another light just to kind of give his hair a little bit better of a rim would have been nice but uh but either way this is a nice kind of starter raw image to begin working on and my vision for this is we're kind of in this great rustic looking uh, wine gallery and I wanted to have a nice kind of rustic warmth to it with maybe a little bit of a fade. So we're going to demonstrate this. Uh, we'll be using the Lightroom 4 preset system, but of course we will demonstrate uh, how to you know, make the adjustments on your own. I also want to show off some of the new features inside of Lightroom 5. And of course you're going to see that the Lightroom 4 preset system still works just fine inside of Lightroom 5. We are going to making, uh, be making updates to it because it looks like we have a little bit of adjustments being made to the way kind of the process 2012 is working so we want to refine the the settings or, or the presets just a bit just know that anybody that does purchase the presets from i believe it was april 1st on and through uh when lightroom 5 is released they get a, a free upgrade to the lightroom 5 preset system when it does become available and for everybody else if you guys have had it for quite a while don't worry the upgrade price is going to be very very inexpensive to upgrade to the new set uh, and, and yeah, so let's get on and get to editing this image. And I'm gonna start first, I'm gonna remove my information real quick. Uh, let's start with our crop, and I wanna pull this crop in just to get rid of all this junk on the left side that we really don't need in the image. I want it so that we end the image with basically this wood right here. I'm gonna straighten it out a little bit so that the tops of the wine uh, kind of cabinets line up with each other. I'm also going to pull it in a little bit from this right side just so we don't show this corking over here on that kind of looks a little bit weird. So let me make sure that my strongest lines look good. I'm going to straighten out a little bit more. Let's actually go a little bit more this way. So it doesn't have, there we go. Now these are really the strongest line in the image and that's what I'm correcting to. So this table line looks a little bit off, but overall the image looks correct because our strongest lines look pretty accurate. If I wanted to, I could do a little bit of like pin cushion or lens correction to kind of fix the uh, curvature there, but I'm not really worried about it. It's kind of part of the shot. So let's go ahead and start processing. Now I'm going to start with the uh, soft portrait and we're going to go to extra soft color just to give a, a nice refined soft look to this image. And then we're going to go down. I'm going to add a, uh, a curve. And again, what I want to do with this is really kind of create that nice soft fade uh, with a little bit of a vintage pop. So I wanted to have some warmth to it as well. So I'm going to go into my warm curves. Let's drop to a punch, a vintage punch. And I'm going to go with maybe either an apricot or a amber. Let's just see which color toning I like better. I kind of like that reddishness or the redness that we get in the amber. I think the apricot or the, uh, I'm sorry, in the apricot, the crimson is a little bit too red. So Let's go with that. I don't really want to go with cross processing on this image. All right, but I dig that. And uh, from here on out, we're just going to make kind of minor adjustments to the panels. Let's go through and explain everything. And we're also going to show you guys some new tricks using the, uh, well, our new little tool here, the radial filter tool using our Lightroom 4 presets that we have for our brush presets. So let's get started and just make our minor adjustments kind of overall to the image. Uh, first, I'm going to raise my exposure a bit just to kind of pull their faces a little bit up while also dropping highlights and whites just a tiny bit more. Okay, we're gonna raise the shadows also a little bit just so we're not clipping too much shadow. And I'm gonna balance this out actually. Let's go into the tone curve. We can see that the vintage curve has added this nice little S curve, uh, which is boosting contrast throughout the mid-tone range, but then we're pulling up shadows, pulling down the highlights to kind of clip highlights and clip shadows. What I'm gonna do is just lift the shadow clipping a tiny bit. 
uh, and I'm going to pull up the fade as well. So as we pull down, pull up from the bottom, it's increasing the fade. As we pull up this little second uh, kind of mid-tone shadows, we're bringing up the detail in the shadows so it doesn't clip all of our blacks, basically. All right, so let's bring it up to about here, right along that edge of the line. And then what we're going to do is pull down the shadows and blacks. So that way we're adding back a little bit of contrast, but we're still retaining some of those shadow detail. So we're just kind of bouncing it out. All right, now with the mid-tone highlights, I'm just going to pull it down a tiny bit. And that looks pretty solid right there. I'll add a little bit more clarity to the image. And uh, with saturation, I'm actually going to drop this by negative 10 as well because I want to have a very rich tone without a lot of the underlying colors being present. So let's drop that to negative 10. What I'm going to do is go up to my temperature. And right here in temperature, we're going to raise the temperature to kind of give that nice rustic warmth that I'm looking for in the image. And that's about where I want to go. And that's where you can see the negative 10 vibrance and negative 10 saturation does a great job in allowing some of the original colors to be present while not letting them be basically overpowering in the image. OK, so this is looking pretty solid right now. Let's go down. We don't really need any additional split toning. Uh, detail, let's just zoom in and give it a quick look. This is just the standard detail with the setting, and it all looks pretty solid. Uh, noise reduction, I might back it off just a tiny bit so we retain a little bit more detail in the image. That looks good. And we have reverse lens vignette. Now, in this one, I'm going to actually bring in the lens vignette a little bit uh, because I do want a vignette. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys some cool tricks here. So this is looking great for all of our basic settings. Uh, hopefully, you all know exactly how we got here at this point. Again, if you're confused at all, just feel free to pause back up and check it out. What I'm going to do now is select this new radial filter tool. Again, this is only available inside of Lightroom 5. What we're going to go to is this one-stop burn. and uh, it's kind of interesting how this tool works. The normal default for this tool is basically everything outside of the selection area is what's going to have the settings applied to it. Now, that's the default, and you can always invert the mask right here. A lot of people actually miss this invert mask when they're talking about it in kind of the uh, you know updates on what's going on in Lightroom 5 beta. But the invert mask will actually just switch the affected area. So right now, we want to leave it just regular. So we want to basically be affecting the area outside of where our couple is. And I want to just add this nice little subtle burn that kind of just pulls down the area of interest into our couple. OK, and uh, I'm going to leave it about right there. And what we're going to do is just grab our old uh, graduated filter. Well, I say old, but it's really it's it's an oldie, but a goodie. And it's a Lightroom 4 goodie. All right, so let's grab that. Let's pull it over. Actually, I think it was in Lightroom 3, too. I'm going to pull this over from the left side because this was where our window lights were. So they are naturally brighter in this area. So let's just drag over from this side. And I want to darken it up just so we have kind of the same moody environment from right to left. OK, now overall, I'm digging where this image is at right now. I think I like it a little bit on this darker side. I'm going to leave it there. If we want, we can now play with contrast a bit. I might add just a tiny bit of contrast. But I'm digging where this image is, and I love it as kind of this low-key, moody, rustic image in this wine gallery. All right, so that's it for this episode. Let's check out our before by hitting backslash. So here's that before image. Here is the after. We use the Lightroom 4 preset system within the Lightroom 5 beta and using some of these new tools. Hopefully you guys dig this episode and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.